guys, welcome back to SoulString. Hope everyone's doing well. Today we are going to look at the super exciting new neural DSP archetype, Matteo Sassato plugin. And I've got to say, I didn't like it. Okay, before you guys absolutely destroy me in the comments, let me start by saying, as usual with the neural DSP plugins, this is incredibly high standard, really slick. Matteo Sassado on his side is an incredibly talented player. If you guys don't know, he's got a very varied genre. He's kind of neo soul funk rock. He's got everything. One of the young talents that has come out also through social media and that is really making a name for himself. He is personally one of my favorites because he has a lot of emotion. He does not just do the fancy things, but he's also kind of has a bit of a vintage vibe. So I really like him as a player. Also, I have reviewed other neural DSP plugins, as you can see in the link below, most recently Tom Morello. And I kind of, although for different reasons, had some very similar concerns. Before we get started, I also did want to add a extra little consideration. As my dad once told me, colors, and tastes are individual things. And I think he's absolutely right. So the whole reason for me to start this channel was that I wanted to answer some of those questions that I was and still am asking when I'm about to buy a new piece of gear. So without all the kind of marketing BS and all the kind of things, and I do not judge anyone else because, you know, there's businesses, there's agreements, there's lots of things and everything, you know, is cool. But you just need to be able to get a solid, basic answer sometimes from someone with no vested interest. So that was the whole purpose of this channel. At the same time, I also want to just put it out there that if I ever review something that I don't particularly get along with or that doesn't suit my style, preference, whatever it is, it does not necessarily mean it's a bad product. It does not necessarily mean that you shouldn't try it out. It's just my impression. A lot of the time I stick with a product for a number of weeks before I actually review with it. And I've done the same thing here. But I just want to say that these are my tastes and I try to give you some objective facts, but it does not mean that they necessarily are right or are wrong either way they're just tastes and preferences and we are very lucky let me just emphasize this again to be in a world where we can get so many cool products where we have so many cool companies like neural dsp that give us these choices so we should all be happy and we should all be actually grateful even if we don't like a product that we get a chance to play it so enough blabbing let's move on to the actual plug. Okay, here we go. So first of all, let's just start by saying something. Matteo Sassado, as you know, has a very distinctive sound. He uses a lot of ambient sounds as well. He uses a lot of crunchy noses, very lo-fi as well, but quite a bit of high gain on some of the solos. So there's a lot of effects in his sound. So he uses compression, he uses overdrive, modulations, delay, reverb. He kind of blends those in in a very nice mix. So let's look at how Neural DSP managed to fit all that stuff because it is quite a complex setup into this plugin. So the first thing I noticed when I opened the plugin is how incredibly nice it looks. And I've got to say, Neural DSP on the graphic side, on the kind of colors, on the quality, on just the overall kind of package. Just, it makes everything look so pretty. I mean, the designs are really alternative. The details are incredible. If you see this little detail, how it's not symmetrical with this side, really amazing. I mean, you know, we have to just talk about how it looks because a lot of us guitar players base some of our comments on how things look. We base some of our choices even on how things look. And this just looks amazing, at least for my eyes. I love the light blue in the same way that I loved Tom Morello plugin as well. It looked amazing. 
having said that, for those of you that are familiar with neural DSP softwares, they maintain a very consistent approach to how they set up each individual plugin. So as usual, going from my left to right of the screen, you have your pre effects, you have your amp head models, your cab models, your EQ, and your post effects, if you wish. So if we start with the pre effects, you'll see all the main effects that Mateus uses. So on the clean sounds, he uses compression. He has two very different types of overdrives. Overdrive one is more lo fi crunchy over to drive two is higher distortion but also goes into the fuzz territory then you have a one and all kind of mod pedal that does trem vibrato and chorus so it's kind of very cool to have all these effects put into one pedal and these are all very customizable and again the graphics look i've got to say amazing really how you know the details, the button, all the color scheme is really, really nice. Moving on to the amp heads, you have three different amp heads. You have the first one, which is this pretty and pink one. You have a vintage vibe, one channel, low gain amp, which just has very basic controls and gets that kind of nice, a little bit of grit, a little bit of the verge of overdriving of distortion tone, really, really quite nice, very vintage in sound. So very kind of old school sounds there. The second head is a more, I think, American style amp. It's a cleaner amp. If you have three modes, thicker, thick, and normal, then you have all the controls. And this one is really good also for those ambient sounds where you don't want it to distort. It's very clean it's very customizable because you have a three band eq as well so it sounds really really nice then finally the third one and this is the bomb in terms of the graphics i mean look at this artwork really nice i don't know where it comes from but it looks very very pretty very nice all the details the knobs etc the kind of fake leather looks beautiful very very nice work neural dsp incredible graphics or whoever does this for you is really good and this one is the high gain amp so you have a three band eq you have a bright switch a shift and all the usual so gain presence master and output matched to those you get three different cabs but you can delink them so you can use any cab with anything you want so these are automatically linked with each individual amp, but you can easily, like this, delink them. And so pick this one and that one and mix and match as you want. As usual, Neural DSP gives you a lot of options in terms of mics. You can have two mics on each side. So you can have dynamic 57s, condensers, ribbons, whatever, then you can play around with the position of the mic, distance and levels, and you can pan them right and left. So very cool. If you want, you can also disable it and run another plugin software like something like Two Notes or Celestian. But moving on, you have a nine band EQ, which looks really nice. And finally, the real cool things that Mateus has in his rig as well he's got a vintage like echo machine like rack unit which has loads of cool sounds in it so you can select each individual head that you want with this selector head here it has tape mods drive it's got everything and you can make some really cool ambient sounds with that and then he also has a very cool sounding reverb actually i really love the reverb in this plugin the final bit you have your usual input you have a noise gate then what they've included with this is a transpose i believe some of the other you know dsp plugins have a transpose but essentially you can go down 12 semitones or up 20 12 semitones so if you want to make your guitar sound like bass go down very cool We'll see how that sounds, actually. Um, then you have an input mode. Then one of my favorite things that most kind of plug-in 
amp suites are starting to have now is a doubler to, to kind of give that wide stereo sound. And so this, I must say, I like, I like a lot and it kind of just thickens out that sound really nicely. Then you have your standard output. So that was a very quick overview of the actual plugin. Um, as I said, immediately hit with the fact that it is just so pretty. And we are back. That looked very sleek. So let's get down to the actual business here and let's listen with our ears and see some of the main sounds out of this plugin. I just chose five of Mateus's own presets on the plugin simply because there's loads of presets there and you can tinker with it for ages. But if the artist himself chooses those presets, let's just go with those. And I tried to get a wide selection. So I was going straight into my audio interface and just that as a plugin. No extra EQs, nothing as usual. I want to give you exactly the sound that you get when you use the Zamp Suite. Okay, let's go. It is very clear that Neural DSP have an incredible series with the Archetype plugins across the board. They are very polished. They are kind of the apple of guitar plugins. There is no doubt about it. Graphically, the detail they put into all the amps, effects, cabs, the whole package is of an incredible high level and you can see that you can hear it. They have a very, very polished product, which they keep bringing out with new iterations, new players, new preferences, etc. Going from the original Soldano to the Tom Morello to Rabia to, in this case, Matteo Sassato. So these are very, very wide ranging in terms of tones and they are very accomplished. You can get these for a relatively 
inexpensive price. They cost, I think, about 119 bucks. They are easy to download. The main thing that I really, really like about Neural DSP is they give you a full featured 14 day trial. So you try them all out, you see if you like them, if you don't. And that's a really cool move. They don't put any of those kind of blocks in the sound or limited features. It is really smart that they let you try it in your home, in your own recording studio setup, whatever you want and you can see if it works for you. On the other side, I have to be honest, and when at the beginning of the video I said I didn't really like it, maybe that is not the right way of putting it. I have to say that recording this video, I had a hard time with the plugin. I had a hard time, not with the interface, not with the amp, but I had a hard time getting inspired by the sounds, maybe down to the way I like to record and produce records. But I thought it sounded a bit dull. I thought it was all a bit samey. I thought it was just uninspiring. And I'm a bit disappointed because I wanted to like it. I thought I would naturally gravitate towards this plugin because it's not an extreme plugin. It's not like a super gent or it kind of fits my style of playing pretty well. I like the lo-fi bit crunchy vibe. I like all that stuff. I'm, I admire Mateus greatly. I really like the stuff that Neural DSP do. So it was a perfect combination, but I'm just a bit disappointed in the fact that it really didn't give me any joy or inspiration to play with it. It didn't have that wow factor. Going back to the video I made about Neural DSP's version of Tom Morello's rig, that was a similar feeling, but for different reasons. Tom Morello for me is an idol. I've always loved him. I'm a fanboy and I felt a bit uneasy being forced to kind of mimic his playing to be able to play the plugin. It didn't give me like that creative freedom that I, would, that I normally want in an amp. For me, a plugin is the equivalent of a real amp of real effects, and I use it on records. I use it as a producer. I use it as a guitarist. So I need something that I connect with that I can get a nice tone from and an original tone from not just replicating, in that case, Tom Morello. With Mateus, slightly different because I don't have the emotional connection, but I thought that it kind of got in the same problem, that it forced you to play a certain kind of music. It forced you to play a certain genre. It forced you to have those kind of ambient, super delayed, overly use of effects in all the patches, just that kind of bit wishy-washy sound that is really cool if you have it in a multi-effects, but you don't want every patch to be like that. You don't want every preset to be like that. And I found every preset, for example, was a bit too samey. And even by building my own preset, I found it was kind of hard to get away from that sound. So it's, although it looks very versatile, maybe it didn't quite live up to my expectation of it being a real versatile amp suite of being able to do clean to hard rocking stuff. I just thought it lacked a bit of personality. I thought it lacks a bit of authenticity, maybe. I hate that word, but maybe. Um, it just doesn't really feel like I'm playing a real amp. It doesn't really feel like I'm using these cool effects. It almost feels a bit too polished. And maybe that's my biggest criticism of the Archetype series, especially the latest ones. They all feel a bit too polished. They all feel like, if you want to sound like this guy, this is kind of the polished, beautiful version of it. 
and here you go. Plug in and get on with it. I get the feeling that they try to put everyone who plays these things in a box, depending on what kind of music you play. That for me is the biggest downfall. It goes against what I want from a plugin, whether it's expensive, inexpensive, whether you have a free trial or not. I just really want to have that emotional contact with it. I really want to go, you know, crazy with it. It's all too polished here. It's all too controlled. You need to play what the plugin kind of wants you to play. It's all too futuristic, maybe. I'm a little bit disappointed that I don't like it and that I probably won't be using it that much. If I need a specific sound, yes, it's perfect. But will I be putting this on records? Generally, probably not. Except for that sound, I, I just wouldn't go to grab this plugin. It may be the right sound for you. It may be the perfect plugin for you. It may be all you need. Every player is different. So this is my personal opinion. Please bear that in mind. It's the way I play. It's what sound I hear in my head. For me, it was slightly too limiting. And for a 120 bucks, not entirely sure how many times I would use this. So bear that in mind when you are looking at this. It's not a one thing do all plugin at all. I find it very specialized. I find it goes for a specific sound and I guess it does it well, but it does it in a very polished way. So if that's what you want, fine. If not, maybe worth looking at another plugin. But at the same time, try it. It's got a free trial, 14 days, nothing to lose. So just, you know, hit the link and try the plugin. You may love it. It's all about being creative. It's all about being fortunate to have these tools. We are all very lucky to be in a time where technology moves really quickly and we can take advantage at very low prices of innovations and wonderful things. So overall, good plugin, just not for me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I didn't want it to be a negative video because I do like what Neil DSP do. They do amazing things. I'm in no position to judge them in any way, but just try it out before you buy. So guys, again, write a comment below. Let me know. Is that the impression that you guys could also get with Neural DSP archetype plugins? They're just reissuing basically the same type of AMP models over and over again, and they're all just a bit bland and uninspiring. Do you think that's a fair comment? If not, let me know. I really want to discuss this with you and forward it on to your friends. Like, subscribe, share, do whatever you want. Just be happy and keep strumming. Thank you so much as usual for watching. This has been Soulstring, and I shall catch you very soon. Peace.